Glad to have you with us from Richmond. NASCAR on Fox. Denny Hamlin leading under caution. And time for an AT&T race break and a quick recap. Denny Hamlin dominating. He's led all but one lap here. He lapped Jeff Gordon early. Remember Denny, the pole sitter. Gordon starting at the back of the pack. Some pit problems. Casey Kane lost a three-spot location here. And then Tony Stewart. Jason Lee up on the, that's not, his name is not Earl. He lost a couple of spots on that pit maneuver. In the meantime, Gordon did get his lap back when Juan Pablo Montoya had the spin out. Steve Lazard, his crew chief, cheering him on and getting Jeff Gordon back in it. Right now, Jeff Gordon currently running 12th. And this AT&T race break, you can get an exclusive look inside the world of Richard Childress Racing. Jeff Burton and the 31 Chevrolet because of AT&T. Check out your cellular video on your AT&T handset. You can access all the inside RCR content. Let's talk about in the pre-race show, hey, we mentioned Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr., big names who have yet to win a race this year. Well, the thing is right now, you've already seen how bad Jeff Gordon and Steve Letarte want to get back into this race. They've done an excellent job so far. ill handling race car, but they never quit. Now they've got themselves in a position where they can now do something about it, but you've got to do something about Denny Hamlin, and I think his teammate is getting ready to take him to task. Tony Stewart, 10th. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is fifth. Carl Edwards celebrating that new contract extension, uh, steadily working his way up to sixth. He's making his way up to sixth, but Dale Earnhardt Jr., a guy who knows how to win here, he's also hanging right around there, Chris, and as we get closer to the end, I believe all these guys, plus a guy named Mark Martin, he's not out of it yet either. He's been there in the top five all night long. It's been 18 races since a driver has won from the pole. Denny Hamlin trying to change that. Mike, Larry, Darrell, they're getting ready to go green. Thanks, Chris. Denny Hamlin is making his fifth Cup Series start at Richmond. He has led every time at least 12 laps. He's never started worse than seventh here, and he has only one finish here out of the top ten. He's not yet won at his home racetrack. Ready to go green with our clear drive restart. Hamlin, Bush, Martin, Truex, Earnhardt, the front five. You just feel that advantage at the 11 car. Hey, look at the 18 up on the outside there. You just feel that advantage kind of slipping away a little bit at a time. Not that he's getting any worse. Everybody else is getting better. Boy, Kyle Busch took it sideways off turn two trying to get the lead. I think Kyle Busch in the 18 car knows if he's going to get the lead from Denny Hamlin, he better do it, and he better do it quick after a restart. I'll tell you what, when you've led as much as, uh, as Denny has, you get real comfortable with your car, and you're afraid to make any changes to it. Sometimes that bites you. We do need to mention it. it had only been nine laps since that last caution. The top 10 cars stayed out. We had 12 cars at the back from Casey Kane on back that actually came to pit road for four more Goodyear tires and full of Sunoco race fuel. The front two have settled down just a little bit now. Hamlin in what could be a comfortable lead. Four cars out front, Steve. Mike, I just want to add to what Daryl Walter just said when Denny Hamlin came to pit road the last time. He said, you're making me better in the center, but let's keep working on it. I don't want to get complacent because everybody else is going to get better. And that's exactly right. I yeah. mean, that's that's the dilemma. It's a, it's a great problem to have, but it, it can't Turn be two. a problem. Sorry, they all stacked up right there. Sorry, Larry. One car, uh, Kurt Busch, slow off the corner. We got, we got Spin, problems. crash, turn three. Trouble. And they just keep stacking in there. What turned into well, one car problem over in turn two ended up with all these cars tore up in turn three. And I tell you, the luckiest guy I ever saw, he's just rolling out of there now, is the 31 car. He got into that, but he didn't get any very much damage. So he came through our point leader. They got more than I thought he had. In the 48, he got whacked up pretty good. The field bottlenecked coming out of turn number two and piled up 800 feet later into turn three. I, I've been expecting this flag, just by the guys. way these guys have been racing each other. Three wide a lot tonight, more than I've ever seen here. Blaney, Yaley, and Edwards. And I believe that that, that just knocked Yaley up in the outside wall, and then they started stacking up behind. You see Compartier and the 10 car hard in the inside wall, and it was on from there. It was uh, hit Carpentier's teammate, Elliot Sadler, couldn't check up quick enough, got in the back of Patrick. Boy, did you see Ryan Newman just go, all those guys going by on the apron, nobody really got slowed down very much. And, and Matt Kurt Bush, Kenseth. Kurt Busch in the two took a hard shot.
That was a hard lick on that inside wall by that 10 car. Now Patrick Carpentier has climbed out of his car. He's OK. They just keep piling at 17. He's torn up big time. Kurt, Kurt Busch. Busch has climbed out of his car. He's OK. And the red flag is out. Actually, the 22, I think the 22 pushed. Yellow is out, yellow is. The 96 over into the 99, actually. Burton does an awfully nice job here, guys. Watch this, he gets a little damage there. He gets spun, but not enough that I think it's gonna re uh, put him out of the race. I think Digger got singed a little on this one. Uh-oh, look out, Digger. Look out, Digger. Look out, oh. <laughs> he, he went back in the zone just in the nick of time. I know I'm laughing answer. because all three of us jumped back. <laughs> <on that. laughs> how many lives does a gopher have? <laughs> Cats have nine. I don't know how many gophers have. Now here's, we said Kurt Busch took quite a hit. Locked it up trying to miss Carpentier. Couldn't. Oh, man. Nowhere for Kenseth to go in the 17. Sauter in the 70. And Gilliland. Folks, crank it up and give a listen to this. And you know, right before this caution, I was just about to say that we were 228 laps into this race now, 230, and all 43 cars were still out there. Obviously, that's not the case now. Now, again, we're under red flag conditions. You see the 48 cars sitting on pit road, the drivers evaluating, the crew members evaluating the situation under red flag, but per the NASCAR rule book, you cannot work on the car. Yeah, they're on freeze now. All those guys standing around in 48, they're frozen. But you know, honestly, Daryl, for those guys, a red flag is a good thing. It oh, gives yeah. you an opportunity to really survey the damage and make a good game plan. Yep, it does. Oh, that was zero there. She's all crashed. The race changed in an instant. With NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile, follow the race instantly. When Dave Blaney got into J.J. Yaley, getting him up into the path of Carl Edwards, they bumped Yaley to the wall, and everything stacked up behind them. Carpentier got turned, and then the field piled in. That's what's put us under the red flag at Richmond after 230 laps. Well, Carl was lucky he didn't get a lot of damage there. And what really magnified this whole situation, it was only two to three laps after restart. It happened about midway in the pack. So half the field was coming at this whole situation. That's tonight's sprint mobile monster moment. <laughs> you have got a feel for Carpentier. He had a fantastic yeah. qualifying effort, started fourth, had a good race going, was uh, staying on the lead lap for most of the night, and then a hard hit into the inside barrier. There you see all the cars that were involved in this accident. It was at, at least that many and, and some more with slight damage. Oh boy, this racetrack has been known for excitement over the years and and for some fantastic finishes. Time for a look back brought to you by Ford Drive One. Spring 1992, Bill Elliott in Junior Johnson's number 11 Ford battling Alan Kulwicki in the Hooters Ford. That was the finish. Elliott got the win by 18 inches. Fast forward to Atlanta in November, the same season. Kowicki gets his revenge and beats Elliott for the championship. Ford, drive one.